Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition stops stories. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastny reaffirms government's commitment to the poor and vulnerable. The Department of Consumer Affairs sets up efforts against price gouging. And the Ministry of Health stresses the importance of vaccination amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The Castries City Council, the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Equity have collaborated to ensure the safety of the most vulnerable in society during the COVID-19 pandemic. 67 individuals have been housed at the VG Multipurpose Complex where they continue to receive care. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Shastny on Monday 4th May visited the complex and spent time with the temporary residents. This is a, a really worthwhile endeavor and it's important that we get it right so that it would not only be for a crisis like a pandemic, which hopefully will never happen again in our lifetime, but you never know, but certainly even when we have hurricanes. Then the question becomes, who is homeless? So this idea that persons have family members and they should have somewhere to go, but if they're not going back to that family member's home and not staying there and staying on the streets, they're homeless. Mm -hmm. And you also then have persons who have a home, but are so poor they can't afford to feed themselves. So should they be denied coming into a facility like this during this particular time? And I don't think they should be. I mean, I, I, I think that this, this facility should be open to get as many of the, the, the more vulnerable people in our society, particularly the ones that are struggling to help themselves to be able to come here. The Prime Minister explained that the government is currently in the process of developing a more accurate and extensive list of the most vulnerable in society to ensure that those who are most in need are reached through the National Meals Program. So the goal of the feeding program is to continue to provide hot meals for the handicapped or the disabled persons in our community who cannot feed themselves, as well as the elderly people that cannot take care of themselves. But meanwhile, we're going to put packages together uh, to give to the families of the, of the more vulnerable in our society in which they can cook for themselves. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the options that was discussed, it also came up in Parliament, was the idea of giving a, a food voucher. But I would say to you that if we gave a food voucher to many people, they would go to Massey or some other places and only buy foreign food. Mm -hmm. And so our farmers um, who have lost their market to the tourism sector here right now, we want to make sure that we can link up with them. So the goal is to buy as much fresh produce from our farmers and distribute that to the more vulnerable. So it's a win-win situation. Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney reaffirmed the government's commitment to assisting the poor and vulnerable. Government is fighting battles at all fronts during this war against COVID-19. One of those battles is the protection of consumers through price control. Marvin St. Louis reports. The Consumer Affairs Department through the Ministry of Commerce would like to assure consumers that the department remains committed to monitoring the distribution and prices of control items. Militia Williams Davy, Information Officer at the department, explains. Suppliers of price control goods, these are goods such as sugar, rice, flour, cornmeal, cornflakes, oats, milk, the 3.5 ounce tuna, what we call the small tuna fish, the 7 ounce corn beef, what we call the small corn beef, all of these are a few price control items. We are appealing to suppliers of price control items to ensure that they adhere to the provisions of the Distribution and Price of Goods Act number 35 of 2006. Suppliers should ensure that prices of control goods are properly displayed goods are not sold above the approved prices and of course there should be no hoarding of price control goods suppliers of controlled items are reminded to comply with existing legislation importers of price control goods are also reminded that prior to the sale of any price control good they must submit a price calculation sheet along with all supporting documents to the consumer affairs department for approval of prices and the supporting documents include invoice or invoices customs entry bill of lading and any other document relating to the price control good every business engaging price control goods must keep their records of their invoices and these should be made readily available to officers of the Consumer Affairs Department during the monitoring exercises. Ms. William Davies says the government is also considering further measures to protect consumers. 
the government of St. Lucia is fully committed to protecting the interests of consumers and rising to the challenges posed by COVID-19. In addition to monitoring price control goods, price gouging legislation is being considered. The department is appealing to the business community to act responsibly, protect consumers from further harm and avoid price gouging. Consumer protection and consumer advocacy remains at the heart of consumer groups around the world. The Consumer Affairs Department, or CAD like others, continues to work on strategies to help build a fair, safe, resilient and sustainable economy through consumer protection. Marvin St. Louis, reporting from the Ministry of Commerce. The government of St. Lucia has continued its collaboration with the World Bank in the implementation of the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project. This project aims to deliver a dynamic, inclusive and safe digital economy. Glenn Simon has the details. COVID-19 has brought into sharp focus the need for government to continue its thrust towards digital transformation by providing increased online services to citizens. Coordinated by the World Bank, Stakeholders recently participated in a virtual appraisal mission for the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project. Director of the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Fiona Hinkson, said the appraisal mission provided the opportunity for St. Lucia to incorporate activities into the project that will further support the island's recovery post-COVID-19, while strengthening the digital infrastructure in-country and at the regional level. We are now speaking about business continuity and our readiness or even willingness to adopt and incorporate technologies, not only for business growth, but to also foster resilience that would prepare us for any future shocks like we're going through right now or natural disasters. This is why this project, the Caribbean Digital Transformation Program is so timely, although project preparation began late last year, that is pre-COVID. In 2019, the government of St. Lucia approved the implementation of the DigiGov project, which aims to deliver 164 government services via an online platform. Spearheading this project is the Director of Public Sector Modernization, so Malanassis. He said the DigiGov project where, has gained uh, greater relevance, with uh, government having uh, to shut down many of its revenue-generating offices during this pandemic. Opportunities for e-learning and for citizens to interact with government online and vice versa have made the DigiGov project all the more relevant during this COVID-19 pandemic. Part of our justification, rather, for our DigiGov platform, looking at business continuity, we focus on a lot on cybersecurity, on um, natural disasters, but we did not anticipate this level of disruption within government's operation where, you know, a virus can literally turn the society upside down where government does not generate revenue, but at the same time, government now has to provide services to the public, to the citizens. And um, we think that with the DigiGov platform, we will be able to eventually continue operations of government in spite of these types of situations in the future. In response to COVID-19, NASIS indicated that the World Bank is in support of an initiative to strategize the implementation of a health surveillance system he highlighted the three main components of this system, which includes the integration of the health management system with the border management system, the development of contact tracing applications, and a teletriaging functionality to support frontline staff, clinicians, and doctors to respond to individuals who are either in quarantine or isolation. The Digital Transformation Project has four main components. The first being the digital enabling environment, where we look at the legal framework, um, for e-government, also the telecommunication framework that would facilitate um, our broadband um, policies and strategies, as well as how government would support open access to networks across um, St. Lucia. Secondly, we're looking at the digital government infrastructure platforms and services, which will focus on cutting edge enablers for digital government operations and services. And again, this is where we see um, this health system can um, be funded. Also looking at government productivity platforms and citizen-centric digital services, again, this component uh, we see as supporting the DigiGov project, which is, uh, which is already in trade. And thirdly, we're looking also at digital skills where technology adoption and entrepreneurship will focus 
on building digital skills now for the future. The fourth component of the project focuses on project implementation, support, monitoring and evaluation. The project is expected to be approved in June 2020. Beneficiaries of the Caribbean Digital Transformation Project include St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada and Dominica. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. The Caribbean Public Health Agency says vaccinations against seasonal influenza and measles are useful and available to prevent respiratory illness and vaccine-preventable disease outbreaks during the COVID-19 pandemic. The advice comes as the agency spearheads the observance of vaccination week in the Americas. Harris Anisia Antoine with House and Lucia marked the observance. St. Lucia joined the rest of the Caribbean and Latin America in celebrating the 18th Vaccination Week of the Americas from Saturday, April 25th to May 2nd, 2020, under the theme, Love, Trust, Protect, Get Vaccinated. Vaccination Week of the Americas is a time when countries the world over work collaboratively to raise awareness on the importance of immunization in healthcare service delivery. St. Lucia's expanded immunization program has yielded numerous successes since its commencement in 1977. The program is executed at various wellness centers across the length and breadth of the island, as well as private sector pediatricians. Tekla Jabatis, Assistant Principal Nursing Officer and Immunization Manager at the Ministry of Health and Wellness, expressed gratitude to all the stakeholders who have and continue to contribute to the successful implementation of the National Immunization Program. The government invests almost half a million dollars annually to ensure the continued implementation of the program. This investment underscores the appreciation for the program the general public, particularly parents, for their confidence and trust in the program and ensuring that every child is covered with the required doses of vaccines and completing timely vaccine schedules. The primary health care nurses, as well as the five private sector pediatricians who continue to be champions for vaccination and drive the program's agenda, thus contributing significantly in reducing the burden of vaccine-preventable diseases. The presence of COVID-19 in St. Lucia has resulted in several adjustments to the child health clinic schedules and as such has affected the immunization program. Effective Tuesday, 14th April 2020, all child health clinics were resumed. Therefore, parents are encouraged to continue accessing vaccines at their nearest wellness center and should call to make an appointment. We are aware that at present there is no vaccine for COVID-19 and that according to the experts, several clinical trials are on the way and a vaccine could become available in the not too distant future. We are aware that the pandemic has the potential to significantly impact the routine immunization program. With the current burden of COVID-19 on the healthcare system, and the social distancing requirements, the reluctance of people to seek vaccines can potentially increase and can result in lower coverage, thereby increasing our risk for re-emergence of diseases which have been eliminated in our population. Jabatis also encouraged all citizens and residents of St. Lucia to take advantage of the influenza virus vaccines available as it is currently the flu season. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquiol. If you are in receipt of an abnormally high bill, it is highly possible that you have a leak. That leak may not always be visible. Before you contact Wasco, conduct a do-it-yourself test. 1. Record your meter reading. 2. Do not use water for 30 minutes to 1 hour. 3. Take another meter reading. If the reading changes, you have a leak. Contact a plumber to identify and fix the leak at the earliest. A message brought to you by the Water and Sewage Company Incorporated, Wasco. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle, a Quayol. Monsieur Tan, Chanel, 
Monsieur, Madame, Département de responsabilité pour information à gouvernement de cette ci à CGIS, à ce même pays, Télévision nationale, PIA, NTN, qu'à vous êtes aux nouvelles à Creole, vous êtes aux Primus Hutchinson. Première phase de redéveloppement, grand la place Castri, qu'a continué de trouver un grand coup de chapeau par les ministres gouvernement. Du grand cérémonie, vous êtes ouvert officiellement, première phase là, dimanche passé, le troisième mois de mai, ministre des Affaires les étrangères et représentatif du Parlement pour Paris Castri, honorable Sir Flood Bobre, dit que c'est un plaisir pour eux qui, si vous venez là, en Gwala Place Castri, car ils sont opérés à des environnements qui sont très confortables. Madame Bobre remarque que ce réseau gouvernement a une nécessité pour faire avec la table avec les tables neuf et l'autre facilité nouveau pour les Wivodes, ça a un meilleur service. Et qui peut, il peut garder bien, il peut garder bien. Ce que je veux dire aujourd'hui, je veux remercier le gouvernement de Taïwan qui a l'argent pour nous faire ça. Je veux remercier le Cassius et Consulat et toutes ces agences. Le ministère de l'économie et du développement, Fresh Start, tout le monde qui vient ensemble pour assurer que le travail a marché bien. Madame Bobré, qui a aussi conseillé les Wivodes, pour apprécier la facilité, facilité nouveau ça là et uh, traiter et puis un pile pour caution et protection. Nous n'y pouvons pas assurer que nous avons servi ces facilités, nous ne pouvons pas uh, déranger, nous ne pouvons pas casser les bagages, nous tenons les propres et nous tenons les net. Puis il ne peut pas faire pièce pour nous dépenser l'argent et pour nous ne pas pouvoir casser nous ne nous avons un style pour nous trouver l'autre argent pour venir à Géo. Donc, je veux juste remercier le Premier ministre qui a tenu la vision de ça, le gouvernement, et nous avons aussi remercié ces huit vendeurs. Ils ont tenu un chai patience. Puis, ce n'est pas aujourd'hui que ma quête de ça a tenu, a permis de développer et aujourd'hui, nous avons le gouvernement de ça a fait. Le ministre des Affaires de Développement Économique est très appréciable pour la patience de ces là. Nous savons que nous nous tenons pour tirer là pour un certain temps, pour mettre à l'autre side là sur Jeremy Street, mais nous savons que nous avons un petit temps pour nous tenir ça, joindre tout le monde en place. Mais nous sommes contents d'être bâillés en place et que nous sommes vivants là, car ils savent que nous avons l'habitude de faire du business. Compagnie de l'eau. En cette ici, Wasco, j'ai fait un appel pour que le public prenne un petit patience en plus et puis pendant que vous essayez de camper pour faire service de l'eau pour tout le pays. Nous avons une discussion sur la télévision NTN, trois Grecs Wasco sont présents pour discuter de ces diverses démarches qui sont en place pour faciliter le service de l'eau pour le public à la réponse pour le cas de la maladie corona. Nous avons ce qui a concerné la pratique Wasco. C'est malgré tout hôtel fermé à présent, problème pour recevoir de l'eau, règlement, Jacques a continué à exister toujours. Chef de service d'eau, Wasco, M. Timothy James, expliquait que la compagnie de l'eau, Jacques a fait tout ce qui est possible pour soulager la situation pratiquement. Mais il fait comprendre que si ces hôtels-là étaient en opération, en bas force quand même, la situation était encore plus brutale. So, oui, nous pas les hôtels là pour boire de l'eau, parce que l'argent ça nous a fait, il a aidé nous payer pour toute opération que nous a fait. Mais, en autre si nous sommes nous happy, parce que ces customers n'ont plus de l'eau, nous sommes so, so, pas les hôtels. Nous pas pour garder pour, oui, ces hôtels là fermés, so, il a fait even plus bien pour les pour, pour, pour customers, parce que. Si c'est pour ça, nous avons pour faire plus de place. Et nous nous avons fait faire un hôtel là tout. Rachan hôtel là tout, parce que nous nous pas un hôtel là tout. Et c'est le customer par jour. Donc, ce que nous avons fait, c'est faire un hôtel là. Nous avons fait um, um, 6 méditeurs, you know, 13 méditeurs. Nous avons fait faire un aussi. Mais il y a un plus pour nous. Monsieur James, qui a aussi conseillé les pratiques pour faire contact et puis Wasco, si la ni pièce problème qui a chagriné, parce que c'est le PC Wasco toujours concerné. 
So we don't have qui côté qui plus mal. Because nous savons que nous avons monitoré le network. Mais le délai où il y a eu tout le monde a eu un glow. Et il y a eu un peu de glow. Le délai où il y a eu un peu de glow. Le monde a eu un peu de glow. Et il n'y a pas eu un peu de glow. Donc tout le monde a eu un peu de glow. Et il n'y a pas eu un peu de glow. Donc ça nous a fait, nous a investigué. Si ça a eu un problème, nous a voué pour un choc. Mais nous voulons tout. Ces customers jouent l'eau et nous allons faire le mieux, nous allons follow up, nous allons créer, nous allons veiller à la croix pour vous checker, pour vous assurer que vous jouent. De l'autre officier Wasco qui était présent à ce discussion, c'est l'officier de communication Cherry Ann Gilead Williams et chef projet de ménagement à Gordon Wake. Premier ministre honorable Alan Chastney a annoncé que le Parlement de la présentation de l'objet qui taxe qui le gouvernement a estimé pour amasser à son marchandise et l'autre service qui a été de 472,33 millions de dollars et estimation pour l'autre aspect des marchandises en total de 107,42 millions de dollars. Le Premier ministre a mentionné aussi taxe et report qui a été par 15,1 millions de dollars plus bas que l'année 2019 pour 2020 taxe à son service charge pour marchandises qui a entré en PIA qui a été réduit par 4,46 millions de dollars pour l'année nouvelle. Le Premier ministre Chastney a déclaré que l'argent que le gouvernement a amassé sans taxe j'ai estimé pour hausser pour 94,59 millions de dollars. Le Premier ministre a déclaré que c'est celle plus haut secteur que le gouvernement a expérimenté un haussement plus haut que l'année 2019. Pour 2020. Et c'est comme ça, nous avons trois autres nouvelles là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder, pour vous avoir une invitation. Pour vous remercie encore, si vous avez conservé la vie, vous avez vous présenter une autre nouvelle en Coyol. À présent, vous avez vous présenter au Genel. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.